Hello everyone, Amy R here with Prairie Paper and Ink and back yet again with another Stamp Timber exclusive. This is a collaboration set between Honey Bee Stamps and Simon's Stamp. And this stamp set is limited edition while supplies last during the month of Stamp Timber. So if you are interested in this set, make sure to check it out. I'll have a link to it in the description box below the video. So I started off with a piece of Distress watercolor paper and I have the smooth side face up here and this is the pre-cut A2 size of so four and a quarter by five and a half and I have it in my stamp platform and I am stamping some of the balloons from this set with um, antique linen distress ink. So I wanted something really really pale. I was going to kind of try my hand at somewhat no line but I don't mind that at least for me the antique linen shows up quite obviously but I also like that because I can see it because some no line you know they're really pale um, distress inks and whatnot I have a hard time seeing them so I just started kind of lining up the balloons I'm letting them overlap I'm not masking anything another thing I thought I would try doing is kind of doing basically glazing with watercolors and layering the colors to make the balloons look a little more transparent so this all was really an experiment on my part, which I usually don't have time for. I, in fact, I don't have time for, but I wanted to do it anyway. So I stamped the balloons kind of in a cluster here onto this piece of watercolor paper. And once I was happy with the amount of balloons, I wanted to kind of mix like the, there's that great big huge balloon and then there's kind of that oblong balloon and the smaller one. And I wanted to add a few of the smaller ones. Just it gave me more opportunities for more colors. So stamp those. And then for the actual watercoloring, I'm using my Mission Gold watercolors because I haven't pulled these out in a while. So I decided to start with these and I have my just my water cups here, one for clean, one for dirty water, and then my silver size six water brush. And I've super sped this up. <laughs> I didn't spend too much time because th this is a good way to experiment with, with images like this that are very simple like these aren't florals or um, you know anything with a ton of detail like they're basically like circles ovals you know very simple shapes. So the first two I did I made sure I was working like not next to each other or not layering uh, because you want everything to be dry and my first layer I kept it very transparent. Honestly, if I was to redo this, I think I would stick with keeping it transparent. My, I've said this before, I have a very heavy hand when it comes to color. I really like to, you know, add all the layers, add the color, get it really dark. But I think I would have liked this more if I would kept it to like maybe one layer of watercolor, like kept it very transparent. So I did the first two and they're completely dry at this point. And then I start adding in my yellow and yellow is just like this anyway. It seems to reactivate like everything, but the pink was just starting to bleed. But this is where a heat tool comes in handy. I was able to dry it before that the pink balloon basically was like bleeding into the yellow and I would have ended up with just, you know, a mess. And I want that definition of the edges of the balloons. So my heat tool came in handy with this. Anytime I would have the color, you know, moving where it wasn't supposed to, I would just dry that layer and it was good to go. So I was very random with my colors. I was just kind of grabbing ones in the palette that, you know, I liked looking at. And I was just doing my thing, adding the colors, just seeing how the layers of the color looked. And um, also kind of being aware too of not adding colors that I knew would go muddy. So like I, where that aqua or teal color is on the lower what was what will be the lower right when it's right set up um I originally was going to do that one as like a green but layered over the pink it probably would have turned you know a muddy color so I was just again experimenting I added another layer of that pink to kind of intensify it and at this point I was just like I really don't like this <laughs> I honestly just no <laughs> But I wanted to keep going just to see if I could kind of salvage it because I'd spent a, fa a fair bit of time, you know, doing all this watercoloring. So I stamped the little, there's little bow images in the set. There's a couple different bow images. There's several different little string images. So I was stamping those with VersaFine Onyx Black Ink. And the balloons that are technically kind of behind, I would stamp off the bow onto scrap paper so that I wasn't getting like the full concentration. And I'm doing the same thing with the string. The strings for the balloons that are kind of technically behind, I'm stamping them off. Even though on camera they look... The same as the other ones but in real life you, they were lighter so the areas where those strings were um, along the bottom there where they're supposed to be you know the same strength if that makes sense i just went over that with my pilot envelope addressing pen just to darken them so it just gave it that little bit of 
you know, them looking a little more as if they're behind those transparent balloons. So again, I still wasn't happy with this, but I've said this before as well. Um, when in doubt, add splatter. <laughs> so I added white splatter. I was just using Picket Fence Distress Paint, splattered that all over it. That helped a bit. I was like, okay, I, I like this a little bit more. The splatter kind of distracts from, I don't know, I just wasn't feeling it. I, like I said, I think if I kept the balloons a little more transparent, a little less watercolor, I would have been happier with them. But I was determined to get this card. I was determined to make it work. So I'd added my splatter, let that dry. The sentiments from the set, I stamped one part of the sentiment onto some vellum. And then the word celebrate, I stamped onto black cardstock with Simon's clear embossing ink. And I am um, emb heat embossing them with the white detail embossing powder. Melting both of those with my heat tool. And the vellum one, I die cut with one of the sentiment label wafer dies. And then the celebrate um, was cut out. And then I'm going to adhere those to my card front. And that white splatter on that like turquoise color balloon, it ended up kind of like a splotch almost. It just, it wasn't, I didn't like how that looked either, but covered that up with the sentiment. So we're, we're good to go. <laughs> so lined up the sentiment on the vellum strip there and just kind of wrapped around the edges and did a little bit of awkward holding with my washi tape and everything to hold that tight on to my card front. And those little ends, I just folded over and I'm just taping them into place with washi tape because you're not going to see this. It's going to get adhered to my card base. So once I have that taped for the actual word celebrate, I decided I was just going to adhere that flat to the card front. So I'm just going to use a little bit of multimedia matte adhesive, squeeze a bit out of there, lay that down onto the card front, and then I just put an acrylic block on top of it just to hold it for a couple minutes while the adhesive sets so that, you know, it stays adhered since it's on top of the vellum and the watercolor paper. And while that sits and dries for a minute, I'm just going to stamp the inside of my card. And it's um, heavyweight white cardstock cut to four and a quarter by 11, squared to five and a half. So it'll be a top folding A2 size card. And I created a sentiment with stamps from the Tie One On stamp set. That is something I absolutely love about Honeybee is there's always this plethora of words, words and phrases so you can build and build and build and like pretty much come up with any sentiment you want between so many of their sets. So I created one that said, you are the life of the party. Stamp that on the inside with that VersaFine Onyx Black Ink. And then I'm going to adhere my card front with just some Nouveau glue. And same thing, once I have this adhered, I'm going to put my stamp platform for it actually on top of it just to hold it flat. So it gives it a minute to, you know, really set and adhere to that card front because it's a little bit warped from the watercoloring and the heat and all that stuff. And then as my final bit of embellishment also to distract <laughs> from the card, because in my head, I still wasn't caring for it. I added bling. That's another thing, you know, add splatter, add some bling. Usually that'll that'll work. And it did. The bling really just made this a lot, you know, the fun and the sparkle and everything. And in the end, I act, I like the card. I'm, I'm happy with it. That's also why I'm sharing it. <laughs> so I used some um, rainbow sparkle mix jewels from Little Things by Lucy's Cards, as well as the chunky ones, because uh, the colors were perfect with the colors I ended up using for those balloons. So I just kind of very liberally sprinkled these onto this card front and I'm adhering them into place with more multimedia matte adhesive. And that finishes off this card. So I will have links below the video to my blog post. I'll have um, info about the stamp timber set, links, supply list, all that info will be in the description box below the video as well as on my blog. So check that out if you are interested. Thank you all so much for watching and subscribing and thumbs upping and commenting on my videos. I really appreciate it. And I will see you all very soon in the next one. Bye.